Hi there, welcome to another episode of our series Migrate to Power BI. In today's video, you would learn how to prepare to migrate to Power BI. That means in this video, we are going to discuss all the actions that you need to consider prior to migrating to Power BI. So let's get started over there. The pre-migration step emphasizing upfront planning which is important preparation before moving through the five migration stages. This is going to be the very first part where you have to consider all the actions before even starting your actual work to migrate to Power BI. Most of the pre-migration steps will occur once though for larger organizations some portions may be iterative for each business unit or departmental area. Now let's talk about the output from the pre-migration steps. The output from the pre-migration steps includes an initial governance model, then an initial high-level deployment planning, in addition to an inventory of the reports and data to be migrated. Now let's discuss about create cost-benefit analysis and evaluation. In this process, we need several considerations. The very first would be clarity on the business case and BI strategy to reach a specific desired future state. Second would be clarity on what success means and how to measure progress and success for the migration initiative. That means what are the different criteria or the KPIs that's going to define the success and how you are going to reach at that level. Then we have to also consider the cost estimates and ROI calculations over there. Lastly, we would come to the point where successful results for several productive Power BI initiatives that are smaller in scope and complexity levels. So you need to evaluate those as well. Now we are going to talk about identify stakeholder and executive support. In order to identify stakeholders, we have several considerations. For example, ensure executive sponsorship is in place. Secondly, you have to also ensure alignment with stakeholders on the business case and BI strategy. Thirdly, you should also include representatives from throughout the business units, even if their content is slated for migration on a later timetable, to understand their motivation and concerns. Next, you can involve Power BI champions as soon as possible because they are going to help you out with a lot of different strategy in terms of migrating to Power BI. Lastly, create and follow a communication plan with the stakeholders so that you can communicate with them effectively. Please note over here, if you fear you are starting to over communicate, then it's probably just about right because it takes a lot of efforts to migrate to Power BI and to communicate with the stakeholders. Now let's talk about generate initial governance model. That means how you can generate your initial model where you have to perform several key items to address early in Power BI implementation. The very first would be specific goals for Power BI adoption and where Power BI fits into overall BI strategy from the organization. If you are unaware about the Power BI adoption plans, please leave your comment in the comment section and then probably we are going to start our new series on Power BI adoption plan. And alternatively, you can also check out Microsoft documentations for Power BI adoption plan. Secondly, you should know how the Power BI administrator role will be handled, particularly in decentralized organizations. Next. Policy is related to achieving trusted data. You should know how to define them and how to implement them. Use of authoritative data sources, addressing the data quality issues, and use of consistent terminology and common definitions. So all of them, you should have a clear idea how you are going to govern them or implement those policies. You should also take a note about the security and data privacy strategy for the data sources, data model, reports, and content delivery to internal and external users. And lastly, you should know how internal and external compliance, regulatory and audit requirements will be met. Now we are going to talk about conducting our initial deployment planning, which is going to involve defining standards, policies and preferences for the organization's Power BI implementation. There are several critical items to address early in Power BI implementations. For example, Power BI tenant settings decisions, which should be documented. Secondly, workspace management decisions. Again, that should be documented. You should also note down the considerations and preferences related to data and content distribution methods, such as apps, workspaces, sharing, subscriptions, and embedding of the content. 
Also note down about preferences related to dataset modes such as such as use of import mode, direct query mode or combining the two modes in composite model etc. Also you should think about securing the data and how you are going to allow the access on that data. Working with standard datasets for reusability is another very important and critical item to discuss because if you have one golden data set from that you can generate different reports that is going to be the best decision. Now there are several more items which you can see on your screen. You can pause your screen and have a look. If you have any question and concern regarding these please do let me know in the comment section. Now then there is a task where you have to establish the initial architecture which again involves several steps. For example you should have Power BI tenant set up an integration with Azure Active Directory for proper authorization. Also define Power BI administrators who are going to work on the different admin aspects of Power BI. Procure and assign initial user licenses. Licenses are going to be required whenever you are going to publish your content on Power BI services and then going to share with the different user group. The next part is the configure and review Power BI tenant settings which is a part of Power BI administration. And if you don't know how to work on that, then please check out our series on our YouTube channel that is Power BI Admin Tutorial. You will get to know how you can set up. Next is going to be set up workspaces roles and assign access to Azure Active Directory security group and users. Then you can configure an initial data gateway cluster with a plan to update regularly because Microsoft generally provides updates every month or two months for Power BI data gateway. There is no fixed schedule for that like the Power BI desktop and Power BI services. Then you have to procure initial premium capacity license if you are planning for the advanced data analytics or you want to go for the Power BI premium capacity based licenses. Then configure premium capacity workloads with a plan to manage on an ongoing basis. So those are all the initial architectural considerations that you should consider before migrating to Power BI. Now let's talk about the defining success criteria for migration. The first task is to understand what success looks like for migrating an individual solution. And in that we have to answer a couple of questions. The very first would be, what are the specific motivation and objectives for this consideration? So for this one, you should know the most common reasons for migrating to Power BI. Like why you want to migrate to Power BI? What are the features you are going to get over there? What kind of analysis you can perform over there in the Power BI? Whether it's going to be compatible or not? So all those questions should be answered over here. Next would be what's the expected cost benefit or ROI for this migration. Having a clear understanding of expectations related to cost, increased capabilities, decreased complexities or increased agility is helpful in measuring your success. It can provide you a guiding principle to help with decision making during this migration process. And this is going to be very helpful. So please answer this question before even proceeding for migrating to Power BI. Next would be what key performance indicators or KPIs will be used to measure the success? In this case, you can consider the number of reports rendered from legacy BI platform decreasing month over month. Or you can also consider the number of reports rendered from Power BI increasing month over month. Or number of Power BI reports consumers increasing quarter over quarter. Or percentage of reports migrating to production by target. And lastly, you can also talk about cost reduction in licensing cost year over year. So these kind of KPIs you can consider to define success criteria for migration. Next we are going to discuss about prepare inventory of existing reports. For in this section you have to start preparing your inventory of the report, data sources and audit log before moving to or migrating to Power BI. Preparing an inventory of existing reports in the legacy BI platform is a critical step towards understanding what already exists. The outcome of this step is an input to assessing the migration effort level. By considering all the steps over here, you can migrate to Power BI. And the last step would be explore automation options. It isn't possible to completely automate a Power BI conversion process end to end. That's pretty straightforward. However, compiling the existing inventory of data and reports is a possible candidate for automation when you have an existing tool that can do it for you. The extent to which automation can be used for some portions for migration processes such as compiling the existing inventory highly depends upon the tools you have. So if you have any of the automation tool that can do this for you, please start using it. This is going to save a lot of time and a lot of cost for you if you are going to migrate on Power BI. In the next video, we are going to talk about stage one. That means gathering and prioritizing requirements. So please stay tuned for that one. Don't forget to connect with us and also 
if you are over here for the very first time please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest power bi updates and videos see you in the next video